Hello Math 140 students, we are going to pick up on page 30, section 2.8, solving linear inequalities. So here are some familiar symbols, the equals, the not equals to, the less than, the less than or equal to, the greater than, and the greater than or equal to. Um, a linear inequality is an equality containing expressions in which, in, in which each variable term contains a single variable with an exponent of 1. Here's an important um, fact that you need to know about inequalities. Whenever you, so you change the direction of the inequality whenever you multiply or divide by a negative. Okay, that's really important to make sure that you guys understand that. Um, so our set folder notation always has like these braces and then this line right here that you see here that represents such that okay. And for our interval notation you can either have your parentheses you can have brackets You can have parentheses and brackets or a bracket and parentheses and you always go from your smallest value to your biggest value for example, it says write the solution set in set builder notation and interval notation and graph this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to graph. I think that's going to be the nicest, easiest way to start this thing. So I'm going to start at the number line. Here is 0. Here is negative 2. And if you want, you can tell me where positive 2 is. Because we have the inequality that is less than or equal to, so here we have this less than or equal to, that means there's a line underneath the inequality because it's also that equal to. So what you want to make sure that you do, since it's in greater, less than or equal to, you want to put a solid filled in circle. That's really important. And it says that x is less than. So all the numbers that are less than negative 2 live over here. So that is where you're going to point this. So that is going to be my graph. So now when I do my interval notation, I'm going to read it from the graph. So remember, your interval notation goes from your smallest to your biggest. So here, your smallest number, well, if it keeps going on forever and ever and ever in the negative direction, it's going to be at negative infinity. The biggest or the maximum number here is at negative 2. Because there is a line underneath inequality that less than or equal to, then I'm going to get a bracket. Now, for this one, my goal is to get the x by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. So now I have 4x minus 9x, and that's going to give me a negative 5x. It's going to be less than a positive 17. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by a negative 5. Remember here, when you have your division by a negative, you have to remember that the inequality is going to flip. So now what you have, well, you know that the negative 5x, the negative 5 cancel. So you have your x here and you have your 17 over a negative 5. And remember, you divide it by a negative, so that inequality switches direction. So now you have x is greater than a negative 17 fifths. So my answer is that x is greater than a negative 17 over 5. And just because I usually get this question a lot. I'll write it over here. Negative 17 over 5 is the same as 17 over negative 5, 
which is same as negative 17 fifths. Here, it just means that the fraction is negative. It does not matter where that negative sign lives, whether it's in the numerator, the denominator, or over to the side. It all represents the same. Personally, I like to have it in my numerator. That way, I'm less likely to make a mistake. Now, from here, I'm going to do my graph. So for my graph, the number that I'm looking at is going to be a negative 17 over 5. And it's an open circle because it's strictly greater than. So the number that's greater than negative 17 over 5 is going to leave, live over here in the positive direction. So now my interval notation, I can read it from the graph going from smallest number to biggest number. So my smallest number is negative 17 over 5 all the way up to my biggest number, which is going to be a positive infinity. Now for number 3, I have this negative 20 is greater than or equal to a 4 fifths y. So what's going on here is that I have this fraction. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of it. So the reciprocal. And if you need to, remember, any number can be written as over 1. So now you definitely have your fraction and its reciprocal cancel out. That should always happen. And now you can say, okay, well, I have really a 5 fourths times a negative 20 over 1. But you can cancel the 4 and the 20. That's going to go 5 times, and don't forget that it's negative. So now you have 5 times negative 5 is greater than or equal to y. And remember, this is going to be multiplication. So really you have negative 5 is greater than or equal to a y. I usually like the y on the left-hand side. So I'm going to say y is greater than or equal to a negative 25. This is going to make my graph a little nicer. So for my graph, I have a negative 25. It's a filled in closed circle. And I'm pointing towards the positive direction. I'm also going to have my interval notation. And it's going to go from a negative 25, because that is the smallest, and it's a bracket, to the biggest number, which is infinity, which is always going to get a parenthesis. Now we have some practice problem. This is where you guys are going to try to do these problems. Um, but I know that we're doing this you know, on the computer, which is fine. But I want you guys to really try to do this. So now is the time that if you have your computer or whatever device you're watching this on, press pause and really try to give those practice problems a try. So go ahead and press pause. Okay, so I worked out those three problems and I do apologize. That first one, there was a typo. There was actually two variables in number one. I have a T and a P, which makes it really difficult to solve this problem. So, typo. Sorry about that. For number two, I got the Q isolated, and I got it so that Q is greater than 23 over 4. So, when you graph it, it's an open circle, and I have my interval notation. For number three, I had to distribute the 8 inside the parentheses, combine my terms, get the U isolated, and I get that u is greater than 10, so I graphed it with an open circle, and I have my interval notation. Now I have some word problems. It says, Dawn won a mini grant of $4,000 to buy tablet computers for her classroom. The tablet she would like to buy costs $254.12 each, including tax and delivery. What is the maximum number of tablets Dawn can buy? Well, you can think about it as 
Each one is going to cost a total amount, but she only has 4000 to spend. So let's think about this. Total that you can spend is 4000 The cost per tablet is $254.12. So we want to know the maximum number of tablets a Don can buy. Well, what we can do is we can do a division. We can say 4,000 being divided by 254 and 12 cents to get us how many units this is going to be costing. So we have that we can buy 15.74 computers. Now, does that make sense? Can you go to the store and say, I want 15.7 computers? No. So let's think about this for a moment. What does this really mean? So the cost of 15 computers, well, that would be the 254 and 12 cents, and we're going to times it by 15. So it would be the 254, 12 times 15. Well, when we multiply that together, we get 3,811 and 80 cents. So here, this is under 4,000. So you might think, oh yeah, I can maybe I can buy more. Well, let's think about this. The cost of 16 computers, well, that would be $254.12 times my 16. And that's going to give me $4,065.92. So if you only have $4,000 in your grant, then that means that the most you can buy is going to be $15 without going over. This 16 computers, that's too much. You only have 4000 that means it's $65.92 over what you have. You don't want to pay out of pocket. You only want to use the money that you have for your grant. Um, so that's fine. You can spend less money. You can always spend less money, but you can always spend more than what you have. Okay, now for number two. It says Natalie's phone costs her $28.80 a month plus 20 cents per text message. How many texts can she send, receive, and keep her bill no more than $50? So here what we want to do is we want to set up a linear equation. And better yet, we don't necessarily want an equation since it specifically says that it has to be no more than 50. Then we're going to switch that word equation and change it to inequality. So the inequality means it has to be less than 50. Less than or equal to $50. So if that's the case, well that represents less than or equal to 50. Now, we, what we also have is that it costs her $28.80 a month, no matter what. So that is going to be your fee, monthly fee. Monthly flat fee is $28.80. And here, that 20 cents per, that key word here is per. Per tells you that that's going to be your rate, which tells you that's going to be your slope. So here, your M, or your slope, is going to be 20 cents. So really, you can think about a linear equation
as y is equal to mx plus b, where m is your rate, and that b value is your flat rate. So if that's the case, then you know how this is going to work out. You already have this has to be less than or equal to 50. That flat rate was 2850. And so that M that you have, your rate is that 20 cents. And X is what you don't know. So you have 0.20X plus your 2850. Now this is the problem that you're trying to solve. So to get the x by itself, you're going to subtract 2850 from both sides. So you can get 0.20x is less than or equal to, and now you have 50 minus 2850, which gives you a 2150. And from there, you're going to divide by 20 to get the x by itself. So you get 107.5. So how many text mes messages can she send and receive and keep her bill less than or equal to $50? Well, she can send a total of 107 text messages. And so that is going to be your final answer. You can't really send half a text, so you just round it to 107. That's the most that she can send. Okay, and that is the end of this section and this chapter. If you guys have any questions, please contact me or contact our tutor. Thank you.